This video tutorial for Computer Repair Simulator is going to cover the World and Lab Editor. The World and Lab Editor is more for your modders or anybody that wants to customize their lab or the level that they're playing in. When you first start playing, you'll see over here you have a drop down window. You can select your level or you can use the default level. So for instance, if you make your own lab in the level editor and you import it, you can now play it and actually repair computers and build computers in that lab or that level. So this video tutorial is going to be a little bit longer than most because this is more for the modders and um, it's going to cover some of the details on how to create this customized level. So under your player profile, you can click World and Lab Editor and I am going to let this play through I'm not going to pause it because I think it's good as somebody that's editing software to understand everything from start to finish and kind of see everything happen in between. So, you know, what we're doing right now is we're loading uh, the, le the level and lab editor, which is going to let us create some unique levels and use them for gameplay. Once your lab and level editor loads, you're going to be uh, shown a menu, load map, clear map, and close program. Um, before we get into that, I wanted to make note that your player panel is not necessary, so you can move it kind of off to the screen, but keep the reset button semi-visible so you can reset everything. Click on the left hand, drag this off the screen because we don't need this right now, and then right click the white line on the event window. Um, now that we've done that, uh, we can start to create or edit our level or our lab. So for now, I'm going to um, close program, close the program. Um, if you want to close it using the escape key, just hold the escape key in, press yes, it'll close the, the, the level and lab editor. Uh, but for now, we're gonna keep going. Um, if you wanna clear a map, select clear map and then find the map you want to clear we'll clear map 4 and now we're going to load a map we can load an existing level or if we select something that's empty it's going to let us start a new level so i'm going to select map number four and i'm going to give it generic level and press enter when you're done when the level opens up you're going to see pretty much a flat plane and a few objects along with a welcome message Close the welcome message, take your action panel and move it to part of the screen that you're comfortable with by clicking at the top of that panel and use your WASD keys by default to start moving around. You're going to see several things on the screen. The first thing is this rotating item with the green particles coming off of it. This is your camera or your player start. You can move this by using the add player start option. The second item is your job location. This big blue box and the little blue box are showing you that the object, which is your desktop computer, is going to start at this position and work its way out. So assume that your job is actually in this box. So when you build your level, you're more than likely going to want to move where the job's at, probably on a table or a lap bench or in a rack or a cabinet. Then you're going to start, um, you're going to move your player starting location to a certain part of the map that you want the player or the camera to start off when, when the level loads. Uh, there's also the system over here, which is, you know, by default just laying there until pretty much you go and play the game. So don't worry about this, it's just going to be there as a reference point. Um, when you actually go and play your level, it's actually going to be moved. That desktop computer is going to be moved inside the box. So now that we've covered that, let's get customizing your level. The first thing we want to do is click on add a welcome message. You can upload a customized welcome message if it meets the size requirements by using the mod button in the game launcher. For now, we're going to use the one that's predetermined and we're going to press OK. Next, we're going to change, um, we could change where the player starts, but right now I don't know where he's going to start because I don't have a level. Um, the next thing I want to do is change the music. We'll, we'll work on weather and time later. 
So if I go to add music, I can go through and select different options. And if I don't like these options, I can use the mod editor uh, in the game launcher and upload my own music file. Music file uh, music files really have to be in a .ogg format um, for licensing purposes. You can also set if this music file will continue playing after it loops through once or if it only plays once and then ends. So once you select that option, press OK, that, and we're going to add maybe a plane. So in any office environment, you pretty much have a floor and a ceiling. This would be kind of designated as a plane. So click on the plane button. And again, if you want to move the window around, click kind of at the top panel. Um, question mark at the top right will show you exact information about the item. So you can click on this to toggle it. We'll keep it open for now. But to add our first plane, you'll see that it says start here. Use the previous and next buttons to, to begin or cancel to go back. So if we click on next, you'll see a big concrete plane showed up. Concrete one, go to next, it looks like a towel floor. Click on next, looks like a carpet. Click on next, it looks like grass. Click on next, move back, what is this? It looks like a wall. So you can see that the planes are really, you know, for big, long objects like ceilings, floors, walls. Um, for now, this looks nice, so what we're gonna do is we're going to lower it by clicking the move down. So in this window, when you position an item, before you actually apply it, you need to set some properties. And I guess now's the time to go through some of these properties. So before I was showing you the question mark, well, if you enable this now, you're gonna get really specific information about this current item. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this and scale it appropriately to start the level. Uh, to do that, I need to move it around a little bit, and you'll see as I move it, um, you know, press these buttons, the item does move. So, what I want to do is move it right. Actually, I think it's getting stuck. So, I need to make it passable. Now move it right, and you'll see it now moves. So, this, these are flags down here. So when you saw that the floor was colliding with the player's start and it didn't move, I needed to correct that by using the passable button. So now I'm gonna keep moving it right, and the longer you hold, the faster it goes. Now I need to move it down. So there's a button for down, and it looks like it went through. So I'm gonna move it up a little bit, move it up, move it up, move it up. You'll see it's starting to come through and that's probably good. So I've now laid my floor down for my level. What else can I do with this? Um, creating radius in and out is something more advanced. So if you're cycling through models, if the model keeps showing up um, like directly on your guy and you can't see it, you can create the radius out, which pushes the default loading option out a lot farther from the camera so you can see it more easily. I'll show you that option when we start adding the actual objects to the level. Um, you can also scale up and scale down and with scaling you can turn your X, Y, and Z flags on or off to allow you to do different scaling. So for example if I just left the Y on and I did scale up you'll see that my floor only stretched on the Y axis. I'm going to scale back down, and you'll see it comes down. And if I do the same thing on the X without the Y, you'll see it goes really far this way and not really far the other. So what I'm going to do is put this back to where it was before. So your scale is a one to one. If I need to scale it and keep it proportionate, I would check both the X and Y flags and now I can scale up and scale down and you'll see that they scale proportionally. So I'm going to bring it back down to one. Okay, so it's currently positioned right. Um, for any odd reason, if I need to rotate it, which I don't need to rotate this right now, but I'll show you this rotate feature a little bit later. Um, we can look at some of these other options as we go through. So this is a floor, obviously it doesn't need a shadow, so I'm going to turn shadows off. 
the best thing to do is keep shadows off on objects that don't really need them. Um, if you click lock attributes, what this will do is when you press the OK button, the next item that loads, it's going to retain all of the scale and inf all scale information and all flag information. It lets you quickly add the same object over and over again. So if I were, you know, if I had to scale this floor and make 20 of them, if I didn't want to spend the time on adjusting each one on the size, if I if I customized it, I could keep the lock attributes enabled, and this would allow me to create a very much a duplicate or a replication of what I created before, keeping the same properties. Um, we saw what the passable option does, but usually when any object such as a floor or a wall um, or anything the player like runs into or, or you want to have a collision on, you want to make sure this is turned off when you're done setting it. So yeah, we turned it on to move it, to navigate it, but now we need to turn it off because during gameplay, we want things to fall and actually catch on the floor. Um, you can do an overlay. Overlay is more for other objects that have alpha transparency. Uh, for instance, if you have um, a CD-ROM image, uh, or a CD-ROM file or a 3D file. The center of the CD-ROM is actually open, but um, in the game it might show up as like black if you don't turn overlay on. So turn overlay on and anything that's transparent will usually go transparent. Uh, animated sound effects, special effects, and functions we're going to cover later when we start adding objects, which makes more sense. So, you know, um, but if you wanted to, you could look at animation objects uh, and special functions. So, um, let's apply this. We're going to lock the attributes, apply, model is now saved. Now we're going to be asked, you may continue to add another model or go back to the menu. Well, let's go to add another model. So click the yes, and you'll see that the new model was added, and it is exactly where the other floor is. So this is what helps you, this lock attribute, this is what helps you create a more consistent level. Look what happens if I do uncheck the lock attributes and let's see, I'm going to show you an example of how to delete something too. So we're going to save this without locking attributes, then we're going to add another one and you'll see the floor that was just created now is not using the same information as the other two floors. First off, it's higher than the other ones. Uh, second off, if we adjusted the size, then this wouldn't show up because the lock attributes weren't enabled. Okay, so let's cover how to delete something. We made a mistake. I'm going to close this window for now. And you'll see, uh-oh, the delete object button is only available at level load. So for now, I'm going to click on done. Then I'm going to click on load level and then load my generic level. The only time you can delete objects is when you first load the level. This is because I didn't want to complicate, complicate the data file when uh, doing a level generator. So click delete object and you're going to come down here and click on, let's see, click on, where are we at? We're going to click on this item. We've got to be a little closer. Alright, so move up. Alright, now that we're close enough, it's going to highlight white and we can left click to delete it. What else did we make that needs to be removed? Okay, we didn't save that last floor, so that didn't save. So we're good there. But you can see, in order to delete something, you just have to get close enough to it before you make any changes to the level. So if I delete this object, get close enough to the floor, you'll see it turns white, and if I left click, it's going to remove it. We're not going to remove this because we do like it, so it looks like my texture messed up a little bit. So I'm going to delete object again, and then just kind of go over it, close it. Okay, so my floor is back. All right, so now that I have my floor, what I want to do is maybe add some walls. I'm going to add building structure, and I'm going to go to the next model. Here we go. So it looks like I have a block wall. 
And as I go to the models, you'll see this object showing up right in front of my face, which is kind of annoying. So I'm going to use the Create Radius out and keep holding it, left clicking. And you'll see that this object is being pushed out. So now that I have created the radius, the view radius, a little wider, I'm going to lock my attributes. And when I click on the next model, you'll see it loads in front of the player and not right on the camera. So this is what the create radius is. And you can always customize it. As long as your lock attributes are on, it's going to be retained throughout all the other objects. So it looks like we have an easier way to see these, these items as we cycle through. So, you know, let's find like a wall. And I'm not going to go through everything. It's just going to, I'm going to show you an example of how to add some basic stuff and um, take it from there. So you know, let's use this. So we have a wall. Let's place it. And we're going to move it down. Notice that my passable option is not selected. So when I move down and hold it, it's going to collide with the floor and stop. Now I can move it around. So let's move it to the edge of my pad. And you'll see as I'm moving it forward, it's actually moving it out. So that's pretty good. I'm just out of the wall. If I, add a, if I want to add a second wall, I can do that by um, saving this because I like that. That's good. So I'm going to save that by pressing the green checkbox. And now I'm going to press a green checkbox again. And again, I'm going to move this around to create a second wall. The forward, left, right, and backward is in reference to your camera, which makes sense. Uh, a little easier to manage. So if you turn your camera and you now go left, it's actually just going to go leftwards on the screen. So line up on the wall as best you can and try to get it pretty close. And you can also add other objects as transition if it helps. But you can get these pretty close to where they look seamless. There's two walls. It looks seamless. So that's another wall added to the level. Well, you can keep working on this using the same technique, but let's move on uh, to some of the other features. So, for example, let's say we wanted to add a wall over here. Um, I know I said we were going to move on, but this is kind of covering the next step. So if we add another wall right here, and we wanted to spin it, we can use these rotate functions over here. You'll see we can spin it this way, you can spin it the other way just by clicking the left side of the wheel versus the right. Now let's look at the other methods of spinning. If you click the top you'll see this black circle here. Click the top portion of this uh, circle it spins one way. If you click the other it spins the other. Now we can click the other rotate. Kind of see how it moves. And that's how you rotate objects. But we don't want to do that, and this is really messed up now. So I'm going to uncheck the lock attributes, <coughs> and I'm going to cancel it. And I'm going to add building structure again, and now I have a reset view. Um, so again, go through your models, find what you want, and then put it down. You also see there's things like windows. Windows right now in the level editor are not transparent, but when you start playing them in the game, they actually are transparent. So for instance, uh, here's a window that's transparent. Brick wall, brick wall, brick wall. Okay, so now we're kind of going through all the walls. All right, so let's move on. We're going to cancel that last item, and you'll see we can't delete anything until we click done and reload the level. But, um, you know, we put the walls up. What's next? Let's maybe add, I don't know, it's like add a tree or something. So let's go outside. And go through our models. I think our lock attributes is actually okay. Our lock attributes messed up the way it was being viewed, so now I think we have a. 
So we can cycle through and you can see all the different bushes and shrubs and trees. So here's a bigger one, it's a big plant. And then of course you can scale them down. Looks like a fern. Let's go through some others. Again, you can scale these down and keep the settings. These are just really, really big. If you have an issue, just press OK. It looks like we're in the trees. Looks like a nice tree, so we'll use a pine tree. <clears throat> Move it down. Yeah, nice little pine tree. We're going to make it bigger, so we're going to scale it up. We're just going to scale this to be like massive. Okay, so we got a big, big, big pine tree. Oh, look, there's a bird too. So there are birds that fly around uh, the level. Okay, so you know that's an example of putting a tree down. So I'm just going to save it. And let's look at maybe some animation right now. So, you know, we just put this tree down, but you know, to make the game more interesting, I added an option for animation. So look, here's a little tree. And what I want to do with it is maybe some special effects. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do is if it has an animated scene in the model file, I can click on the animated button and I can change the animation speed. Since there's no animation built in the file, I'm going to use alter alternative methods. So, you can use a sound effect on the tree. You can have a start, the sound start event, which can be pretty much automatic. You select your sound file. So it looks like I only have like door open, which isn't relevant. But if I had like a tree swaying sound or maybe it blowing in the wind, I could use that. I could have a delay for how long it takes to start before, you know, after the level starts. Do you loop it, the loop delay in between and the volume? So this might be a good example. Like if you were having a windy day outside, you can upload this and you can set it to pretty much play through the whole entire uh, scenario. So we're going to cancel that for now. Let's go to special effects. Special effects will let us do several things with this object. And this covers pretty much everything that you see in the level in the lab editor. So let's go through and let's say we want to add a special effect to the tree. So let's click on fire. <clears throat> you probably don't see it, but if you look down at the origin of the object, we now have a little flame. And if we change this fire to smoke, it changes the texture. Let's go to water, let's go to frost, now to fog, back to nothing, and then fire. So let's go to fire, and let's change the special effects area size. So if we increase the size, you'll see what we did here was add little particles kind of around the tree. Now this would be kind of cool if this was like smoke, and maybe you had like a rainy day, this is like a cool effect of raindrops off the tree that you could use. Well, let's change it around and see if we can come up with something else. So let's change this to be a little bit smaller. And you can see it's getting smaller as we're, you know, the number values changing. And if we get closer here, you can see these effects are still going on. Well, let's change it up a little bit. How about let's increase the particle size. So you can see now, by just changing this minor little option, we have a completely different output. Let's try a different texture. Okay, looks like a special tree now. Particle size is a little big, so we're going to make it a little bit smaller. And now, let's check out the particle count. So let's increase the particle count. And you can now see that the particles, there's a lot more of them. So let's back that down again. And 
now let's look at the uh, velocity. So if we change the velocity parameters, we now see that it almost looks like a flame coming out of the tree. We can also change the velocity in different directions. For instance, changing the Y parameter and see it adjust the angle. You can change these to positives or negatives. So we're going to back that down a little bit. For fire, we'll just make the tree catch on fire. We need to change the velocity x to something negative so it goes up. Otherwise, if we change it to positive, it's going to be like a rocket engine. And you'll see it, it looks like a tree taking off now. So again, you can go through and just with little changes of the settings, make different effects. So again, let's go and uh, change some of these. You can see you can change the offset. It looks like it's more like scattered. Change the offset on the, let's make it negative. Okay, I can't change the offset for negative. But you'll see we can adjust this. So as we move around, kind of get a vision of what you're working with. You can also change the color. So let's change it to uh, more electric or purple or blue. Purple. So now we got all blue. We can change the gravity of this so it falls kind of like a spark or like a rain. Can also reverse the gravity, I believe, which makes it almost float. So now again we have some different effects going on with the tree. Now this could be relevant for anything. You could have a computer that's actually you know showing different effects or particles or or whatnot to enhance your uh, play, playing experience. Um, you can also change some of the options like right now it's set for beam. We'll turn off beam, different effect. We'll change the bright, different effect. We'll change the flare, a little bit of a different effect. Uh, the streak, turn it off versus turn it on. Um, and then your alpha transparency. So if you want it to be, you know, really bright and, and you know, on the screen, very visible, change it to 100. Otherwise, if you make this lower, um, it's going to burn off before it gets to the end of its cycle. And you can see that, you know, that's going on here. So this covers the, uh, the particle system, and you can make a whole bunch of these and, um, you know, adjust them as you need and come up with a whole bunch of different options. So I'm going to cancel this for now. Um, my special effects, I'm going to turn off. And the next thing I want to look at is functions. So if you click on functions, we're still looking at the tree, and let's look at pan. So if I turn at the point one, you'll see the tree is rotating now. Get a different viewpoint on this. So the tree's rotating. Um, let's see if we can get a better tree. Okay, it's like a palm tree. Go back to functions. And let's just make it rotate. So you could pretty much change any option here that's like a crazy mob it's actually making me sick so I gotta turn this back down you don't necessarily have to uh, have it pan in this direction you can also have it tilt or roll spin maybe if you want to put a fan on the ceiling or just maybe it's a wacky level and uh, you want to make just some really interesting things so you can you can change this to meet your needs, I'm going to bring this back. Okay, so I'm not going to save that. So I'm going to 
reset my model and go back to functions and if I ever want to change any of these parameters I can so um, we covered our pan tilt and roll but what happens if we want to move something so you would use your speed X and your time X and your speed Y your time Y and your speed Z and time Z so for example um, let's turn the speed off on X and let's make this tree go up and down repetitively so we're gonna go look at Z Z is for up and down X is for left uh, left and right and Y is for forward and backward at least in this viewport or as a reference if we click on speed Z and set it for 5 maybe 4.98 then start increasing it it's gonna move five uh, paces up every point one second um, so if I were to set the time for one second this cycle will be one second so it's moving every every time it goes up about five paces for one second and you can see how this changes the outcome so again I'm going to change this change it the time a little bit higher you'll see it completes its cycle a little bit later and then it'll reset resets and goes back so again you can change um, these different options so if you want to do like more Y you can change it to go a different way you know again a tree is not a good example but if you had a car you can make a car in front of the store go forward and backward um, if you want to make people walking around go forward and backward you can certainly do that and it just adds a little bit more enhancement to the game um, if you have a storefront that you make and it's a busy street you can make people walking by you make things happen outside you can see this the tree still strolling so for 15 seconds it's gonna go at that speed so this covers pretty much some of the extra functions for when you work on your level so I'm gonna reset that and I'm gonna cancel that tree because I don't really want that tree let's start adding more of the content of the uh, the level so what I want to do is I want to add um, let's add a table so I'm gonna to go to add general item I'm gonna go through my options here and click my radius out so I can see what I'm looking at I'm gonna lock my position and I'm gonna go through some of these models so just different tables looks like a light fixture um, we were talking about alpha channel this is a good example you'll see the overlay on the graphic it shows up as like a black background uh, for these types of objects you have to click the overlay button and it'll make it uh, transparent so keep going through looks like a light box it's like some bars some pipes It's like shelving units, a chair, more lights, window blinds, front desk, glass shelf, some cabling. Well, we came to add a table, so let's add a table. I just wanted to show some of the different options. So I'm going to close out of that, go to where I want to put the table, add general items, click next. I have a table. Let's. Uh, you know let's cover the passable flag now so when you move an object around your lab let's try to move it forward when you move it forward and it hits the wall it's going to slide against the wall well if we want it to be embedded into something during the level editor assuming that you're making the level um, in a way that you know looks appealing to your eye or your your, uh, your viewers or your users you can customize this by clicking passable and now when you try to move that table around there's not going to be any collision at all so you can customize exactly where it goes um, and allow it to go through other objects so I'm going to pull it back out of the wall and I'm going to set the table up like I normally would so turn off passable I'm going to rotate it so it's aligned with the wall I'm going to click the question mark so I can see that it's uh, what the pan is the pan right now is 89.73 
Um, if I hold in left control and press it again, it should bring it up to the next increment of one. Otherwise, when you click on this, it might actually show, like for example, 37.35. When you try to move it up again, it's gonna change your values. So once you get it close enough, then hold in left control, then left click your next click and it'll align it perfectly. So now that we have it aligned, let's move it down on the floor and move it back towards the wall. Now we probably wanna have a little gap against the wall because maybe there's cables or something that go in there. So let's move it back a little bit and there's our table. So let's make sure everything looks good. You know, I could put a shadow on it if I wanted to. Um, for now, I'm gonna leave it off. I don't need to do anything else here, so I'm good. So I'm gonna save it. And now I'm going to add a light for the room. So it's kind of dark right now, uh, just because um, you need some lights and this really isn't showing the sunlight. So I wanna add lighting system and a panel comes up, we can add 10 different lights. So I'm gonna add the first one by clicking add light and switch. And when I do that, you'll see that there's a little light bulb and there's a little switch that shows up. So the second panel over here allows me to locate this device. So the switch, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna move it over to the right. So it's reference to the camera. The switches will go through walls. They're not, uh, they're not gonna detect any collision. Um, now we need to rotate the switch. So under switch pan, I'm gonna pan it so it's flush against the wall. So negative 90, okay. And now I'm gonna push it into the wall. Too much, so I need to bring it, well, no, that's pretty good. So I have my light switch on the wall. I like where it's at. I can turn the light on or off, and you'll see if, if it's turned on, the light turns on, and a little blip shows up, and when it's turned off, the light goes away, and the light goes off. So I'm going to turn it back on, you'll see that the table's starting to light up, but now I want to control this lighting to be, um, I guess, more comfortable for gameplay. So I need to move this lighting, so I'm going to push that window out a little bit, and under my lighting system, now that we got the switch all taken care of, now we need to figure out the target. The target is the light. So we wanna do the target up a little higher. You'll see clicking the up. And I also wanna move it to the left. Again, use that as your reference. And as you move it around, you're gonna see that the light is illuminating different parts of the level. Right now it's illuminating the desk. This is what we're after. Okay, so it's pretty much where I want it to be. And now I want to adjust the light. So yeah, it's in a good spot. So let's adjust the light. We can adjust the color because by default it's set for RGB 128, which is just a standard white bulb. Um, but if I want to make it more red, I can do that by adjusting the color tone. Now it's a red light. Um, if I want to change the strength, because by default it's 500, I can click on the up button and as I change the strength you'll see that it changed the way things are looking in the level. Now obviously this wall isn't doing so hot with the light. Um, that happens depending on your GPU. But what I'm going to do is see if I can adjust it by just moving it. There we go. So it looks like it has to be in a certain area for it to work appropriately. Um, not exactly the way I wanted it to work, but I think it'll do for now. I'll have to figure something like that out. Maybe um, there's things you can do, like put a wall in or something. So now that you have your light, change your strength. This is probably a little bit too bright. <clears throat> so you might even want to consider you know, setting it to something that works. Um, I mean, if it's too bright, it's just, that yeah, makes for a cool level. Um, you know, for example, if we make it really bright, we can turn a flicker on. So every 0 0.05 seconds, uh, it's gonna flicker.
Right now it's going to flicker every five seconds. So on for five, off for five. So in about a quarter of a second, it's going to turn on, turn off. So you can see you can change it. Um, <clears throat> you can also let's see here. Let's turn this back on. Flicker. Okay, let's turn the flicker off. Um, you can start the light on or start it off. So if you want the player to have like uh, to start off in a dark room. You want to make sure this is set to start off so just turn this off and then the player will have to turn that on otherwise if you want the light to be on when the level loads just make sure it's set to on so I don't really want a red light I want a more of a white light so I'm going to set this to about 138 each one you can see I can get the different colors here but the brightness is too much um, so I'm going to turn the brightness down This is probably better. Also, too, if it does bug you with the lighting, you can always remove the wall and readjust like the level. Um, you know, depending on other lights in the environment, it can change it. But there are ways around this. Fortunately, this is just something that we have to deal with because of the game engine. Um, but again, if you go into your game settings, there's a lot of changes you can make. Probably, if I spend enough time in there. I can get this just right because really the settings relate on the graphics card you're using and I don't have a method yet to map those correctly. So um, let's move on. So I have my light. I like it. Now I'm going to press the check box over here to save it and you'll see my light number one is enabled. Now if I clear this it's going to delete all the work I just did. So be careful with that. You know if you want to experiment with a second light use the other options because now you can create a second light switch and if I click on that I now have a second light switch compared to my first. I'm going to close that for now because I don't need that. But now this light switch is completely operational. So if I minimize this and I click the light switch it now turns the light on and off in my lab. So we're going to save this by clicking the green checkbox. Now we have a light system. If we want to add a door we can do that by going, let's say we want to add a door over here. Let's go here, add door. Yeah, let's add a glass door. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to move it down. I'm going to pan it. I need to look at my angles to make sure it's being panned right. So I need to go to 180. Now I need to align it again. It's Right now it's stuck when I try to move it. It's because it's right up on the floor. There's two options. You can set this to passable and move it, or you can move it up to get it off of the floor, and now you can move it around. So you just gotta like unstick some of these items. So I'm gonna move it to the right. I like the collision because it really allows you to butt up two different items. Okay, so the door looks good. Um, so now that I've done this, I'm going to save it. Close it. Okay, so anytime a door is added, the next time you load the level, you can now click it and it's going to open, um, it's going to open up for you. So we can look at that after we load the level. Um, can add outlets right now the outlets uh, don't really do a whole lot but eventually they will so for example let's go look at a few of these so a lock attributes all right now I can look at maybe some of the other options so different data jacks um, power outlets Yeah, so you can put those in the level. Um, sorry, I wasn't in the light, but if I were to bring these over at the light, you can see these a little better. So we're not going to add any for now, but if you want to, you could add them to the wall, just like you did any other object. It enhances the lab. Um, 
the lab experience. Uh, and let's say, I guess we're at the point now where we're going to add the job. So what I want to do now is I'm going to click on add job. And again, when I click on add job, it's going to bring this box closer to where I'm at. Um, it just helps you kind of get your positioning right. So like if you didn't like where it was at, you can close this and then go to add job again. You'll see it showed up right next to the, the uh, camera. So now that it's in a place where I can work with it and it's not really, really far, I'm going to adjust this to be on the table. And I think I like it right there. So that's a good starting point. I'm going to save that. And now I want to add the player start. Well, right now when the level loads, the player is going to load right there. So let's make the player load outside. And I'm going to go back to add player start. And when I do that, it's going to show up right where the camera's at. Similar to what we saw um, whenever we were adding the job right there. So now we want the player to start outside and we're going to adjust him so he's closer to the ground. All right, I like that, but if you want to move it left or right, you can certainly do that by using these, uh, these other keys. And then you're gonna save it. Okay, so we got our welcome message, we got our player start, let's do weather and time. Um, weather and time might be a little unique here um, I have to check it out, but uh, when you go to this option, it's going to let you select your different weather patterns. So by default, it's going to use the default settings for whatever you set it for. So if you want it to be raining when the level starts, you can change it to anything above 50. So humidity, if you change it to 100, you'll see it starts raining. If we change it back, you'll see it turns bright day. So at about 50, you'll see the sky starts turning dark, and then you have a storm upon you. If you change the temperature, anything that's below freezing will now show as snow. You can also change the time of day. So if we drop the humidity, you can change the time of day as well. See, we're getting in the sunset. Right now, the, sky, the clouds aren't loaded, but if they were, you'd see them a little better. And nighttime. And of course, there would be stars out too um, when you're actually playing the game. All right, then you reset. So we're still nighttime. Um, you'll see that there's a max X, min X, min Y, and max y. So y coordinates are here, x coordinates are here. Um, I'll see if this works right now, but what we want to do is if it's raining outside, I don't want it to uh, rain inside the building per se. So what I want to do is I want to set the min, the min x is going to be right here. So the way this works is you have your floor pattern and you don't want the rain to be on the inside. So what you need to do is use your reference point on the screen and go through each one. So the first one is set rain min x. Right now the camera is at the door and I'm looking at min x. So click on set rain min x. Now that that's done, Move your camera backward and you'll see there is a red wall that's set there. That means it won't rain between your min x and your max x. So now I'm going to go over to my max x, which is right here, and we'll just say I want the rain to stop right here. So now I'm going to set your max x. If you go back, you'll see that there's a big wall there, and that's your max x. So now that we set the x, we need to set the y. So this is your min y. I'm going to go to the edge of my level where my wall should be, set my min y, and you'll see now 
that's the barrier and now I'm gonna go over past my desk and set my max Y we'll just go to the wall okay so now we're gonna set our max Y okay so now we just created this invisible barrier you'll see it's raining over here but not within the building if we go to the front door it's raining outside but not inside the building so that's how you set your rain uh, min and max X and Y coordinates. So now that we have that defined, let's save it. And we cover everything. I think we did. So now we're going to click done. And now we're going to reload the map to see how it loads. So we're going to click generic level. So this is how it starts. Looks like my starting player position needs to be readjusted because I'm in the wall. That box probably will have to be reset as well. Okay, so it looks like right... Oh, I know what happened here. So in my properties, I have it set that I cannot go past the level limits. If I go to my options, under more options and under level limits I have it set to yes right now if this was set to no I would be able to go beyond the wall but remember when we set our min and max x and y coordinates for the weather that also sets the level parameters so you can't go out like you can't go outside of those borders so we need to probably fix this uh, starting position we're gonna add it right here so it's inside the level Okay. The door's uh, actually going to be uh, functional whenever the game loads, um, when you convert it. And it looks like everything else is good besides the, uh, the job placement. So we're going to add this one more time. That's a, like I said, we're just kind of getting it close. Okay, and saving it. So, this pretty much is done. We can start to, you know, get this processed and put into the, the actual game. I click on done. And then I'm pretty much going to close the program right now. If you want to activate the level you just made, you can go back to your... Um, game launcher and you can go under mods now go to convert level select your player profile we're gonna select our map was the generic level map number four we have the red box next to it now and I wanna make this my level five right now it's currently skyscraper but I wanna change that to my level five and I'm gonna convert once you convert that, you can show the game level files again, and now you should see the updated name for the map that you've uh, saved it for. Now, if we wanted to actually play our customized level, we can go to play, select your user account, and if you go to the level drop-down window, you should see that you'll have your level in the list. You can select your level, and then change your, uh, or click on the button you want to play the level as. So, we'll do PC repair. So our level's about to load. Alright. And so, looks like everything's working so far. Our player start looks good. The door, we might have to look back on that and adjust that because it doesn't look like it's working right now. We have our intro message, which we've customized in the level editor. Have our lights. Looks like the game's functioning, and it now looks like we have a job. So we could actually just jump into gameplay here. And start working with the system. Actually looks like we are stuck in the wall. So we would probably have to adjust where the uh, job starts because, yeah, okay, so I was able to get it out of the wall. 
Now we can move it around. Now it's hitting my robot. And right click and drop it there. And start our scenario. Also it looks like the weather currently is not quite right because it doesn't look like it's raining. I know we had that set as well. So there might be a few things we have to go back on and adjust. And we would just follow through those steps again and um, maybe tweak them a little bit. And of course, if there's a bug or something's missing, then we can address those. Uh, I think during this, uh, the recording of this video, I've already stumbled probably across uh, two different bugs that need addressed with the level editor. But it's nothing that you know we can't get past. It's pretty easy to fix. Um, so if you create a really good level and you're just really stuck on something, uh, please send an email to our support team, support at computer-repair-simulator.com, and um, you know we'll we'll probably ask you for your level files and we can help you through and, and get things working the way that you want them to work. So uh, stay tuned for some of those fixes. Um, but this pretty much concludes um, the tutorial on level editor.